this video I'm going to be reviewing the UM84 or M12, the military holster. So basically UM84 stands for Universal Military Holster Model 84. So probably 1984 was when it came out or something like that. Something of that nature, right? So anyways, <clears throat> this thing has been around for a long time. I remember seeing these around. I was never issued one. I actually got issued a Serpa. Uh, when I had my M9 and I did not use that correctly at all, but you know, whatever uh, When you're just handed gear and you're told to use it What do you expect, right? So <laughs> anyways um, The interesting things about this holster. I'm gonna just go over the features real quick The interesting things about it is the attachment points number one This thing is incredibly modular and uh, it can be used for several things is basically what I'm trying to say so you have the attachment point here, which actually it will look familiar on the front side here, that's because this thing is ambidextrous. You can set this up for left or right hand, it's all the same, right? So with this attachment system, it's used for big web belts, not just Alice, but you know, anything that is, you know, just like the, the web belts, right? So about two and a half or, or uh, like two inches or something like that, like a two inch web belt. And then you can also just put it through a standard belt right here, like the one I'm gonna be wearing, and I'll show you guys how to do that in a bit. But you can also uh, see that it also has a cleaning rod in here. This one has a plastic one. You can also get like an aluminum one. You might get a military surplus one that has an aluminum one. And this is basically just a punch rod for a, a cloth or something. Maybe you could actually thread in a brush or something but yeah this thing is really you know just I it's not good for pushing out like squibs <laughs> no 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 useless for that uh, so um, kind of reminds me of the Russian uh, like the RPK or RPD where the cleaning kit is in the actual like bipods or whatever so anyways you have an attachment system right here this is for when it's converted into like a shoulder holster and stuff like that and there is actually an extender for this uh, that i'll be doing a review on uh, the a leg extension that's also used but anyways when we go to the flap here you can see that it's held on by this buckle it's just a little metal ring that goes around the buckle here and it can actually slip down you can see this attachment system right here it's just a clamp and then you raise it up and you just got this little flap right here that secures it's very simple comes off easily and it switches simply but uh, I'll go ahead and show that a little bit later but with this flap system you got a simple piece of elastic inside this little sleeve and you've got this little metal hook this is actually a pretty strong metal hook here now with this when you have certain guns in here you you do have a limitation on how much gun you can put in here it's not incredibly universal like I actually have had problems with like the M9 A1 or the 92 A1 96 A1 the rail actually is a bit wide and until you break this thing in and you stretch out the nylon a little bit from use uh, it's gonna be a little tight on getting it out because mine was actually getting stuck uh, so I, I did use this in a training class and I looked incredibly derpy because everybody else has got um, quick stuff and I, I'm pulling in stuff that I'm reviewing just to make it a challenge and make my life harder, right? So, anyways, you can see that this hook goes right in to here and it secures that way. Now, this elastic is actually a bit worn because usually this thing sinks back in like this. It has a good elasticity when it's new. So, here I have a Canic TP9. This is about at the... Uh, this is about at the end of what it's this holster can actually handle as far as size goes So we'll just put it in here and I want you to notice something this piece right here This is what's going to gauge how how Big of a gun or what kind of gun you're going to be able to put in here So it's based on how long the trigger guard is and I'll tell you right now the USP does not fit unfortunately, but anyways you can see that if the butt is sticking out about this far, it's reaching about the end of what this holster can tolerate. So, you peel it over, and then my method is to get this hook horizontal, and get this hook horizontal like this, and pull it, and then hook it in. And that'll give you good range. If you just try to pull down and get it in, 
you're not going to be able to get it into that area. You have to actually get it horizontal and then push it in. And then from there, you pull down a little bit and release, and there you go. So, as far as the retention on this, uh, once this is in, unless you actually snag this D-ring and actually pull down and away, um, you're not going to be able to just pull on it and get it to release. It's not going to work like that. Uh, and you, you're not going to be able to pull on this flap and uh, be able to pull it down and pull it away. It doesn't go that far. And especially if it's new, it's not going to it's not going to really move at all. So um, it's got good retention. It's really uh, the only way to get it is to get this D-ring and to pop it down and out. So pretty secure holster. So uh, you know, features, it's very simple, made of hardcore nylon. Um, price, before we get into everything else price, about $20 used, um, and it can be up to $60 new, and you can still find these, you know, with the U.S. markings for uh, surplus, you can still find them, and you can probably find a new surplus one, like I did, for about 30 to 40 bucks. Uh, but a new one from Bianchi without all these markings. These things are still being made today, and even the Italian military's got some surplus too out there on the surplus sites. You're looking at about 60 bucks, maybe even more, with some of the accessories that are still made today. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into uh, some of the other uh, parts of this, like, uh, you know, getting this on your belt. Okay, so on the back of the holster here, you got these little slits that I uh, kind of put pointed out earlier. That's for basically anything else that isn't a web belt. You can see the size difference here uh, from what this thing can handle and what this can handle. And it basically fits this belt perfectly. Now, some people would ask, well, what can you get? take this off and still have it function? No, because this thing actually holds on the hood. So, no, you can't do that. So... Basically, it doesn't really get in the way at all, so you just thread it in, and the cool thing about this is that it's really easy to thread in, even with the with the gun on, it's not too tight, but it's like, it's got very little slack after it's all, after it's all on, it's got very little slack here, so that's a good thing, in my opinion, and then you just thread your belt through the rest of the loops, and and that's pretty much it. So this is basically how I would have to shoot today because I'm not putting on any web gear. I'm not putting on anything else. Does it look a little dopey? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's going to look a little dopey if the neighbor sees it or anybody else sees it. Heck, you're seeing it right now and it's looking a little dopey to you probably. So, anyways, let's go ahead and do a little demonstration on how to use this. Okay, so the first thing is getting your pistol into the holster. So I have the flap open, I inserted it, pushed it down, it basically reached the end of the nub here, or the trigger guard is basically touching the nub, and now I go ahead and my technique for something that's basically oversized is to pull up and then hold tension outwards as you're going around, and then again pushing horizontally like with the palm, and then you pull it up and slide it into that little sleeve. If you just try to pull down and find the sleeve, then it, it's probably not going to work. At least it doesn't really for me. So basically, that's that's holstering. And if you have something like a 1911 or an M9 or whatever, uh, it's going to be pretty simple. You just pull down from here, and then you you just bring it down, pull down a little bit, and then the sleeve will be easily found when you're pushing up against the holster. You pull down, push up against the holster, and there you go. It doesn't really work because you need all the extra little room and wrapped around, you know, for this for this pistol because of the size. And uh, yeah, it, it's yeah, it's a bit of, of a pain. Okay, so when you're drawing the pistol, basically, as you see there, I you know twist my wrist basically, and there I go horizontal to get this thing into the sleeve. It's basically, just finding it with the palm, and then rotating, and that's it. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show you what this looks like doing a, doing a couple of courses of fire.
Okay, so I wanted to go over some pros and cons real quick before we moved on to uh, little, showing you guys how to turn this into a left-hand holster. So, some things that I do like about this pistol and some things that I don't. First, things I do like. I like that it covers the, that it covers the pistol. I like that the retention method is actually not that hard to deactivate. Once you get the hang of it, it's really simple. It's really simple to put on. You just got to practice with it. I still fumble a little bit with it, but I don't use this holster all that much. I've been working with some other, I've been working with another holster that's in the process for reviewing. So uh, doing this, I'm kind of pulling it out of my butt because uh, I've had it sitting on, sitting with my gear for a while and going over military surplus stuff. But I did recently use this in a class within 96A1 and um, I like that I can still use a railed pistol for this. However, when I was running that class, I actually did have a little bit of sticking uh, with that pistol. Not only was the uh, retention strap elastic still stiff, but also the nylon was still stiff because I hadn't used it all that much. It had just been sitting there and sitting there like it was a reserve holster for whatever reason. But uh, now that it's kind of worn in and I've worked with it a good amount, uh, it fits pretty much any pistol that I can uh, put in there and that will actually, it can, if it can cover it and secure it, it'll fit. So that's where it's at now. So I do like that it covers the pistol. I like that it's mostly universal, depending on the trigger guard size. And I also do like that you can attach it and, uh, to pretty much anything and you can basically, you have attachments to where you can have a leg extension, you can have a shoulder holster, you have all these uh, different options. And here's the other thing, it's still backed by Bianchi. Bianchi is still making these holsters. They may not say US on it, but this holster and variations of it for different size pistols are out there. Magazine uh, pouches for the leg extender, all the accessories are still out there. And they're still being sold by Bianchi. So even when the surplus market, dries up uh, or at least gets close to it to where the price of new Bianchi stuff is less than the military surplus um, then you'll have a good option so anyways now some things I don't like the one thing I do not like about this holster is that uh, it, everybody would uh, see it uh, it's not there's nothing wrong with its durability. There's nothing wrong with, you know, the, its bulk or anything like that. It, it does fine. It attaches great. The only issue is that it's slower than what you can get on the market today. An ALS with a hood, a Safari ALS with a hood, uh, a Serpo with a hood, uh, a Serpo without a hood, an ALS without a hood, um, the GLS, which I got to do a review on. But, anyways, uh, so, here's my scenario that kind of paints this picture uh, the way it should be. So, here's the thing. Going from rifle to pistol. And then, needing to work on your rifle. You got to re-secure the holster. And that, doesn't, that didn't seem like it took me all that much time. However, I've had to do this in in training and I've put myself under stress. I can't really do that on camera because I can't really be followed to kind of demonstrate this. So best I can do is mime it. So basically going rifle to pistol. I could have had my pistol out a little bit sooner. And here's the thing, if you if you get a click, and there we go, I fumbled a little bit. So if now it's precious time I could have been actually working on my rifle to fix any malfunction or reload it or whatever. Precious time is precious so precious seconds are precious so when you're up you got to move down there and typically with most holsters with most holsters you can actually I like to have it on double action but with most holsters like the ALS or the Serpa or whatever basically by the time my uh, by the time my rifle gets down, I'm already bringing up, and I'm basically meeting them together. With this one, I'm basically waiting on my pistol. Uh, so that's typically the problem I have with this holster. And then I've already grabbed my rifle, and I'm sitting there analyzing, and I've already diagnosed it by the time I'm already getting to the point of resecuring it. 
That takes time, that's precious time. If it's in an actual tactical role, probably not a good thing. Um, it may not matter. It may matter. Uh, it depends on, on you, <coughs> what you um, want to do. Now, here's the thing. If you were just to slap this thing in, because during the reload, you might actually need to whip it out again. You might just, you know, put it back in, and then just do your little diagnosis, do your reload or whatever, and then, you know, when all is good with the world, you just flap it closed, just like that. And that might be okay for you. Everybody's got to make their own um, choices, but that's the one con that I could see with this holster. Other than that, once you get used to it, I think it's fantastic. The, the only other point is, uh, why? But anyways, piece of polymer plastic crap, so uh, it's useless. So anyways, let's go ahead and get to the table and turn this into a left hand holster. Okay, the first step is to obviously take out the firearm. So, put that thing on the table. And now, next thing is, if you had this on web belt, this would already be done. It's unsecured. Then you take off the hood here. And then, you basically got to slide this thing out. This is probably the toughest part of it is getting this thing underneath here and that is your little clamp and as you can see here real quick for turning it see right here Bianchi International Universal Military Holster US and foreign patents pending so this is basically where it was at right here it was covering up this M12 there we go, military designation, NSN, and then go over here to the U.S. side, and basically shove it in. And I'll go ahead and pull from the bottom here. There we go. Once you get it started, go right in onto the other side. And you can't really secure it down until you got your hood on, which works both ways. Okay, so the hood is on there. And no more cleaning rod. So, here. And you can see that this angled area right here seems to help with the slot or this little you know, piece right here coming out and going in just angles it a little bit to where it's a little easier so even if you're off a little bit this pointed area kind of helps helps you find it pretty big area for it to go so you can be off a little bit and it'll still guide it in so there you go now you have a left hand holster now I gotta change it back. So that concludes my review of the UM84 M12 military holster. So, anyways, check out the channel Pegasus Tests. He did a review on this holster and plus uh, some other um, some other uh, parts of this and other uh, um, modular qualities that this holster has. And he did a, I think, a little bit more of an in-depth review than I did. I just basically did it off of uh, experience. He did it off of uh, basically how this holster works and everything. So he did a fantastic job on his video. So I'll put that in the description below. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and leave a comment if you ever used one of these and what you thought. I want to hear about how worn out they were or how crappy they were or how great they were. Whatever. Feedback. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you guys around. You guys have a good one.